Hey y'all, Quabila Jones here, host of the Q-Spot Podcast. Make sure to be intentional with your words, your thoughts, and your actions. And please subscribe, like, follow, share, and hit the notification bell. With special guests Damon Smith and Edna Jean having a candid conversation. Hey y'all, Cutie here, host of the Q-Spot Podcast. And I'm back with another video series with a very, very, very special guest. Y'all, I'm so excited to um, introduce this guest to you all. I stumbled upon like his page on Instagram, like most of my other guests. And, you know, surprisingly, he said yes. Like, he didn't know me. I didn't really just know, know him. But, like, look, we're going to make this thing happen. Uh, so, without further ado, my special guest, I'm going to call him by his screen name, Mr. Hey Now. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'm wonderful. So, I want you to tell the people, let's start out who you are now, like what you're doing right now. And then... You know, if you want to reveal, we'll reveal your real name. It's not like it's a secret, but, you know, um, we'll reveal your real name. But first, oh, the topic of this conversation is Day Says a Candid Conversation. So we'll get into who Day is and why, how you came up with that name as well. Mm -hmm. But first, like, what are you doing now? And what's what's present in your life? <laughs> what day? What day is it? Wednesday. <laughs> okay, so so it's Wednesday. Wednesday, I own a custom T-shirt shop. Okay. So that's what's present in my life today, and I'm working on another book. Which okay. is, I'm talking about. This is this going to be even worse than the last one. Oh wow! So, so for those of you who are like another book, okay, we're gonna back this train up just a little bit. So first, he said he's the owner operator um, of Fresh Out Entertainment. No, Fresh, Fresh Out, Fresh it's Out, Fresh Out ENT. Right? I, I made up ENT. a word. I literally okay. made up a word. Okay, Fresh Out ENT custom um, T-shirt. And I'm. What can you do other products? Yeah, people. Oh yeah, I make. I do shirts, socks, masks, sweatshirts. Like I can almost customize anything, but. It just depends on if I like it. I only put out merchandise that I like, right? If it don't look good to me, I'm not, I can't even sell it to you. I don't care what it is. Okay. All righty. And he's located in this, well, I want to say South, but I don't know if Missouri technically kind of South. So. No, we, yeah. listen, I am in the, I am in the Midwest, right? Literally. Midwest. St. Louis is the gateway to the West. Okay. <laughs> All righty. And so if y'all would love more information, I will make sure to drop all of his tags, his plugs, uh, so you can reach out and connect with him and get your gear and get your books from him. Um, so I started listening to one of his audio books called um, December, a story about uh, burning my bed, which is going to be a big part of this conversation. Y'all, it's too real, too raw, too in. Oh my God, so engaging. Um, but you share a lot about your life, you know, from the past to now. And some of the ladies you entertained and some of the other uh, life experiences that you've had, you poured into this book. And so first I want to start out with, um, you lost your mom and her name was Edna Jean. And later on, you might get to see another beautiful baby girl, Chihuahua. Um, who was named in honor of her. Let's talk about, in the book, you talk about what life was like when she was sick. Um, you were also a caregiver and watching other people go through their illnesses and um, you worked in a hospice home. And so tell us what that was like for you and how it impacted your life that For me, right, like, it's, it was kind of, it's kind of different. It's, I have a different outlook on it from having two different perspectives okay so my mother was sick yes but while she was the beginning part of her sickness i was locked up okay right when she found out she had multiple sclerosis i was two three years into doing a, a long prison sentence so while okay. i was there i got to see her deteriorate like through pictures in the visiting room and all of that i didn't really get to see it up close and personal 
-hmm. when I came home though, she was she was paralyzed from like the waist down, right? And it got worse gradually. Then I went back to jail, then I came back home and she was a little bit worse. And then at the end, then we ended up making our little deal. So we rolled the rest of her life out. Right? Okay. It's it's kind of I don't my my look at it is kind of different, right? From seeing people who suffer from those types of ailments and illnesses up close and personally, like it give you a different outlook on it because in all actuality, no matter how you go, the worst case scenario in life is inevitable. That's the only thing that you are promised in life is that you're going to die one day. And most people don't yeah. know when that day is. Well. All right. And so you also talk about in the book, um, you know, her anniversary you know, of her death and visiting her grave and another friend's grave and just um, a lot of the emotions you have surrounding that time. And that's what most people that are grieving um, any loved one they've lost. Um, when it's that, that month, that week, that day, they feel some type of way, happy, sad, indifferent, or really dark and depressed. And so what are some ways, okay, first of all, what are some feelings you have, emotions you have, and then what are some ways you try to celebrate her life, even though you're dealing with the emotions of losing her? Okay, now, now that's a completely different subject, right? Okay. You just now getting it, you just now getting into the beginning of the book. It's going to play all this out that I'm going to tell you. So, before my mother died, I had a funeral, right? Like, I know that's gonna sound odd and all of that, but like 11 days before she passed, I had her funeral. She was there in good spirits, right? Mm -hmm. So when she passed, it really wasn't, I had a different assignment. Have you ever, have you heard the, the little saying they got now that you have to complete the assignment? Right, it's kind of popular on social. You have to understand. It's called understanding the assignment, right? Yeah. So after my mother passed, my assignment was to reunite her ashes with my father's grave. So when she passed, I ain't we didn't I didn't really do too much of anything because everything is had already been set up. I already made a holiday for dealing with her and I celebrated it in her life. So I definitely celebrated in her death. And okay. it was up to me to complete the assignment that she put forward for me after death because that was just to be, you know, life is just the beginning. Then you pass on to the next, well, wherever that is, and you begin whatever it is that you're going to begin again. So I, I deal know. with it, I deal with it kind of differently because I still have a more on my mother. Like, okay. um, I try my best, but the last time I seen her, I wasn't like I wasn't really all that mad that she left me because I never wanted to see her like that. That's not my memory of her. I don't have the memory of losing her and the condition that she was in when she passed. I have I still all my memories or memories of her up and about and young in life and being the mother that I know. Right, I didn't really see her like that in the end. I seen it, but I didn't, it didn't register like that. You and on the flip side of the coin, when it comes to death, right? I'm kind of. I grew up in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. We stay in the top five of the murder capital of America, my whole life. So, death and jail is two of the things that you become most most accustomed to in this city. So much so that almost every day I visit my little brother grave. So I'm I stay that close to it. Like I don't really go outside when I open the front door and go outside to see what's going on in the city. I the first place I stop is my little brother grave, just to keep me just to keep me humble and always conscious in mind that tomorrow night prom. Okay. Uh, a lot of people need to have conversations with you and hear your perspective and hopefully they can gain a different perspective on life and death and everything in between. Um, and they will start operating their life differently 
and appreciate what they do have before it's gone. Um, a lot of people in the city that I live in, it's more so the younger crowd. They're living life reckless and they're living like they're untouchable. And it's like so much is happening. And with a snap of a finger, it's over, it's changed. And so I really hope people listen to you and your perspective. And I hope y'all, they get your books because I don't want to give away everything here. Like I want people to go and get and you listen. The book, out. the book is the book is amazing. And it's the audio. I give I give it away for free. The actual book. Let me tell you, I, let me quick backstory on why the book okay. is like this. So I wanted to write a book, but I didn't really want to write a book. I didn't write it for you will find out later on in the book. I didn't write it for people on the streets. I wrote it for my friends that's locked up. Okay. So even more backstory, I read all Donald Goins and Iceberg Slim and authors of that nature, Sister Soldier and all of that. I'm chasing, that's what I'm chasing right there. I want to be brought up in that in that conversation for writing about my real life. Okay. So I wrote the book for them, but just because I didn't have nothing else to do, I went through all the stages to put it on Apple. I okay. just wanted to put a book on Apple just so I could say I had a book on Apple. And then I did the audio just because the sound of my voice for some odd reason is captivating to some and irky to others. But it is very captivating. I, I did I did the audio to it because that's one of the stories that I kind of got to tell it to you myself, right? I'll, you can read it, but it's not going to have an impact unless I give it to you the way I said it. Like some of the words might not make sense until you hear them come out my mouth and then they, you can understand it. It starts to register. I guess for some reason it's just like that. I'm telling you, look, y'all, I am about an hour in and because it's three hours and some change and I'm about an hour in and I'm like, I can't wait to get back to it. I've been interrupted throughout the day. I'm like, I just got my piece of quiet so I can listen to this book. <laughs> but, um, I love the perspective. And of course, I'm not going to give away the details because uh, there are some very real, real details. <laughs> in there. And, um, but you mentioned certain, you know, ladies and one in particular I want to bring up this, you know, on your social media page, you talk about uh, dealing with depression, which we'll get to that a little bit later. And, but there are a lot of other life events that happened to you, which um, of course I haven't gotten to um, the whole why and the outcome of the burning the bed. I really want to talk about, you know, the why of that. And so, but first I want to talk about this young lady, Keisha. That you mentioned, she sound like a firecracker of some hot tamale, something else, you know. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> and she has some toxicness, toxicity about her. <laughs> yes, um, completely. So about, <laughs> what impact did that have on your life? <laughs> Dealing with her, the love, hate, pull, and tug of that whole dynamic. It's, you know, like, okay, so. There are people that you have in your life that you deal with for whatever reasons it is that you deal with them. And she was like one of them people in my life, right? She came from somebody else and just was kind of around, right? Like just was kind of always happened to be, she always happened to be in the right place at the right time saying the right thing. Wow. <laughs> Well, again, y'all gonna have to go listen to the audiobook to hear more of the story, the interaction with Keisha. Yeah. Um I spent it, more time trying to avoid the lady than I did deal with it. It's crazy. Like it was <laughs> like I, I I keep a thought on my mind, not to answer the phone for her. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so is this character still around to this day? Uh, yes. trying to still be part of your life? She called me the other day. Okay. <laughs> I did not pick up the phone. You know, sometimes you do have to ignore when you've reached a certain level in your life and you move on and moved around certain things. Yeah, you have to just um, open that door. Busy. 
Like, I literally was busy. I would have picked up the phone. Oh, I'm silly. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Hi, my name Day. I, I entertain all nonsense. I'm no, I just was doing something and I missed oh, the call. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not big on calling people back. Like, I don't know why. But if you call me and I ain't pick up the phone, call me back. If you don't call okay. me back, then you didn't want nothing. Okay. <laughs> right. I or or I tell you I'll call you back and then I'll call you back. But nine times out of ten, I don't even say that. If I don't tell and okay. if I do tell you I'm gonna call you back, six out of ten, I ain't calling. Okay, so y'all hear that? If you want him, you better call it <laughs> and leave well, a voicemail. Or call call it. Are my number public? Like on the on the back end, randomly, right? I own a business, so I I actually have to have a phone number. Yes. All yeah, right, and, then. and you can only imagine some of the phone calls that I get. <laughs> I can imagine because I listened to the part about you talked about your Facebook lives. And um, one of your friends was like, you got to be careful with what you say and do and this and that because you're going to get the random psychos and weirdos. And yeah, I'm sure you get all that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I do. Yes, I do. It's, it's, it's unimaginable what I have endured already. And I ain't really been on the Internet that long. Right. But I got some stories that you wouldn't believe. Wow. <laughs> Imagine. Um, I'm a female and I know how we operate to some, you know, not all females, but I know how we operate. So I can only imagine um, what you encounter on a daily basis. <laughs> well, not really, not no more, right? But because I'm older now, right? I kind of got it out of my system. Okay. Right? December right. was a December was a getting it out of my system type of, of fur right so i kind of got it out of my system i'm trying to act my age now okay <laughs> and for those of you who may or may not know he's over 40 i'll let him tell you exactly how old he is if he likes but he's over 40. yeah and yeah. Uh -huh. oh yeah i am i'm over 40 yes my niece yes my niece yes they over 40. <laughs> all right they over. They over and once, 40. it's like once you get 40 it's like this check engine light in your mind, body, and soul comes on. And it's like things just happen. And it's like, um, I can't explain. I'm over 40. So I, when I hit 40, I was like, I felt some type of change, some type of need, necessity to do something different and be different. And so here I am. Yeah. So I can attest to that. You yeah, have mine, to be here. Mine different. Right. I have been a free spirit my entire life. That's why I get in so much. That's why I used to get in so much trouble. I'm a free spirit. I don't be caring. I do kid things. Prime example, earlier today, I found myself in the bottom of a pile of leaves playing with EJ. Right? <laughs> I, I know I have no business. I have no business in the bottom of a pile of leaves playing with my little mama. But I did. Didn't bother me at all. Well, but I mean, yeah, you still should have some fun in life. Never lose completely that kid like energy and innocence. But yeah, but like you said, your knees over 40. So one day you're going to have to stop jumping in a pile of leaves. <laughs> I'm going to ice them down. We're going to keep it pushing. I, <laughs> okay. I feel like an athlete. Hey. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about December. Um, do you care to share which December this was that this story? No. Okay. We're going to leave mm -hmm. that alone. I can't give Just you. Look, I can't give you the year, right? Okay. I can't give you the year of this December because it would kind of give it, it would give it for anybody that might watch you or that's going to start watching you because of this interview because I'm going to post it, right? Okay. I can't give you that. That's going to kind of be a tail sign of who I'm talking about because I don't, the, that's a true story. It's, it's okay. literally published under biography and memoirs because it is. And Every character in the book had uh, is in agreement with what I said. Okay. Nobody has disputed okay. the commentary, right? Let me tell you the story that really just made me want to get my tequila and like a fan was the stairwell story. I was like, okay, 
<laughs> that was hot. That that was a hot story. Yeah. Um, I didn't write her name down. Yeah. However, <laughs> it was the stairwell. Someone just called the stairwell story. <laughs> oh, that was that man wife. Oh, that was that man. That was that man wife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Her, that, I yes. mean the way you described it, the detail, and then like there's a poetry aspect, like a spoken word aspect to how you detail the story. That's what had me intrigued the most. I'm like, oh my God, I want to hear more of this story. I mean, I'm not a voyeur or anything, but I want to hear more of the story. <laughs> yes, it, it's the, the it, it is a great story if you if you just sit down and listen to it, but if you're more curious about me personally and where I come from, things I've been through and that nature, they are beautifully hid in between those, those incidents, right? They said the easiest way to hide something is in plain sight. So I put it right in plain sight for you to find it. That's how you know so much to ask me just from listening to it. Like, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> well, I'm trying to, to again skirt around some questions because I don't want to give it away. I want people to again. I'm saying I'm gonna say this a hundred times before we get done. I want people to go listen for themselves. What good is it for me to tell the story for you to tell it without people listening first and getting their? They're own... not gonna believe you. They're not gonna believe you. <laughs> right, that's the beauty of the thing. They not gonna believe you. It ain't. It don't even matter. They not gonna believe you. They. You could tell them. You could tell them the whole story and be like, "That look, it is an audio book." They ain't gonna believe. You. Ain't they? Because um, it, it's no way possible for an audio book to be like that one. I ain't, I haven't heard one, and I I trolled the audio book community looking before I ever did it. I ain't well, never heard one like that. You are creating a whole new genre and path for other authors who, um, or artists, rather creatives, who probably thought about going that path, but they're like, how is my work going to be received? You know, is it going to just stay in a barrel? Is, you know, is it going to get kicked to the curb or shunned or whatever? But hopefully after reading your not reading, listening to your work. Um, someone who's been thinking, who thinks like you, would just step out there and go for what they know, and, and not be afraid to do it their way. Okay, so let me play it out for you. In in the literary world, unless you have somebody behind you, right, like one of the big houses or something like that, the only light that your project is gonna get is the light that you shine on it. So if you don't put a light on it, then it ain't gonna get no light. But on the on the other end of it, I, I started doing music. I'm too old. Let's not even visit that, right? I do you. I'm a verified artist on all platforms, though, by that name right there, Mr. Hey Now. I am a verified artist on all streaming platforms, but I'm a little too old to do music. What I found out though in the process is you can get 99 cents for a song. Okay. They give you seven dollars and fifty cent for a book. Wow. So, just the math in itself changed the trajectory that I was going in. Okay, I don't really want to be a rapper anymore. I could get richer doing doing something that I love to do, and that's easier than rapping and performing and than the performing arts, right? Okay. Yeah, I can literally sit down in front of my computer and tell you a real story about something that happened to me because that's what happened. It's easy to tell the story when that's what happened. I would love to let you hear a tidbit of what is in this, this next little project I'm working on because it will explain it. I'm just trying to explain life to people in terms that hopefully they can understand it. Wow. Well. Wow. Right. We, without without trying to be like above them or looking down on them, right? I my life probably worse than anybody that listen to me. I probably have been through more than you. 
I'm not judging. I can't judge you because please don't judge me. Okay. All right. So y'all stay tuned for a new work. But in the meantime, um, there is another project you have released. It's called um, Loud and Strong Stories 0 0.5. And so tell us a little more about that, what that one entails. Okay. I went to jail and... <laughs> Let me be all the way honest with you, right? I went to jail the first day of 2013. Why I went to jail is in the book. But I went to jail on that day, right? I went, I stayed in jail for three years. And while I was there, I talked to so many people. And so many people wanted to know what happened. Okay. what brought me back to jail and that is that's what happened right that's the story like have i figured in myself that i got tired of telling the story so i just wrote it okay and back so where story. can we find this one? Oh, amazon kindle right and that's i put that one out right amazon and kindle i didn't put okay let me tell you for the for your female viewers Right. Mm -hmm. For your female viewers, please take a second out of your day to pull up Apple. If you have an iPhone, please go to iBooks and look at the cover to December because the audio cover is not that's that's not it's what not the cover the of that book looks oh. like. No, no, ma'am. You you need an iPhone and you need to go to iBooks and look up December, a story about burning my bed and you'll see the original cover. And, Oh don't, wow! Don't, don't so it's more intriguing than what's on the other. <laughs> oh no, the cover actually go with the book, literally. Okay. Right. So, loud was loud was my introduction into writing, and the only reason I wrote loud was because my mother told me to. She was okay. she kind of she kind of driving this ship from beyond. Her, it was her idea that I write loud, right, and then. It was her idea that I write 142 Thoughts of a Convicted Felon, which was my second book. It's poetry and spoken word. Then she passed. It was her idea. It was her idea. 142 Thoughts of a Convicted Felon is poetry and spoken word. I also have another book called Solitary Confinement. My Walls Are Talking. That is a book of poetry and spoken word. The only reason I even put those books out was because my mother gave them to me. I wrote the books for her while I was in prison and I sent them to her because she loved, she loved to hear me talk my talk and do my writing. So I sent her the books and when I came home, I put out loud because she wanted to touch it. She's into tangible things. It'll come up in December. So right. I put the book out so she could hold it. And then she told me to put the second one out because she wanted to hold it because she had had it. The whole time I was in prison. So I put those two books out in her honor, especially solitary confinement. It's to ensure that she lives forever. But that's a whole nother interview. Okay, well, we definitely have to book some more and talk about these different things. Yeah, um, <laughs> okay, let me let me play out my let me play out my, my mental illness before we move on. Okay. okay, I suffer from depression and anxiety, right? On top of suffering from depression and anxiety, I suffer from multiple personalities. Mm -hmm. That's why my name day, because okay. depending on what day it is, that would be what I go by, right? So mm -hmm. my problem with my mental health is this, my multiple personalities are all high functioning. They all do, they all have a different skill set, right? So I have a writer personality. I have a rapper personality. I have a genuine animal loving personality. I have a custom t-shirt shop personality. I have a street personality. They all have, and they all have functioning, which kind of makes it hard just to get through the deck, because I'll be having so much going on in my head. Well, let's talk about how did you recognize that you had these personalities and 
you knew that depression and anxiety were the things that were affecting you? Years of therapy, actually. Okay. Right. But like I said, I spent I spent 17 years of the 44. I tell you how old I am. I'm 44. I spent yeah. 17 years of the 44 years I've been on this earth in prison. Right. So I've actually, to, as being an adult, I have been locked up longer as an adult than I've been free. So I, all forms of therapy, medication, anything that you might could come up with, I seen it. And from a young child, right? I've been getting in trouble and being bad my whole life. So I seen therapists and psychologists and psychiatrists the majority of my life because they were trying to figure out what was wrong with me. But it came to a point where the answer to my question was simple, right? I had, I just didn't have a love for life. Like living really didn't move me. So I did whatever I wanted to do. Consequences never mattered or anything like that. None of that moved me because I, I, in where I came from, like when you was too bad, somebody killed you. So mm -hmm. that's what I was looking for. I had looked for that my whole life, just the stardom of being one of those people that died tragically. But my mother kind of swayed me away from that. It's the only reason why I don't, I can be honest with you, the only reason why I don't live the lifestyle that I used to live is because I gave my mama my word I would. And that's that means something to me it might not mean nothing to nobody else and i wouldn't i don't judge them nor but i look down on them or up to them about it but i'm just talking about myself like i learned a whole bunch of things in prison but your word means everything so i gave my mother my word i would stay out of trouble and that is the only reason why i stay out of trouble it's a daily struggle for me my drug of choice is nonsense and negativity I do everything in my power to stay away from it. That's why I'll be so busy. That's why I have so much going on because falling back into the path that I am accustomed to is the simplest thing in the world for me and the one thing I'm not supposed to be doing. Okay. Well, I hope anyone who listens to this part of your story is inspired and empowered and encouraged that no matter what they're doing in their life, what it may look like, there is light. I know this is a cliche. There is a light in the tunnel. There is a brighter day ahead. Um, it's about how bad do you want it. Your desire for change has to be greater than your desire to stay the same. Um, so again, I hope someone takes heed to what you said. And if they feel like they can't do it alone, they get a support circle. Um, they go to therapy. Um, medication is not for everybody. And you talk about that. And that's one thing that intrigued me with one of your social media posts is that you don't take medicine or you choose not to take medication at this I, stage in your life. None. No, like and none. That, I don't take I don't take aspirins or none of that. I live like fruits, vegetables, things okay. of that nature. Like I don't put and it's a reason why I'm not saying that medication is not good for some people or bad for others right i'm not saying that all i'm saying is i tried them all they still didn't work right they didn't work for what my problem was because my problem wasn't a chemical imbalance okay. my problem was i was my problem so oh. until i could until i decided to control myself and my impulses what nothing nobody was going to give me in the world that was going to stop me wow okay oh my goodness and so do you feel that all the connections you talk about in your books and the encounters you've had throughout your life um the people you've lost do you feel that has contributed anyway negatively or positively to your mental health oh yeah and I make it worse, right? So I have a left arm full of tattoos, right? Okay. Every last person, they all names. Every last person on that arm, somebody I love to die. 
since I've been, my whole left arm is a memorial to people that I have a story I can tell you about with them, right? Not people that I don't really have a story about, but every name that I have tattooed on my arm is somebody that I have a very wild and interesting story to go with, right? Just, just dealing with that on a regular basis, all the losses that you took throughout life, that way down, that weighs on every person. The only thing about it is with that weight, you have to keep in mind that your turn coming. It's kind of the only thing that they get me up in the morning is that I know one day and I ain't, I ain't getting up anyway. So I uh, might as well make the most of today. Okay. <laughs> All right then. So um, I want to go into before we, you know, get ready to close here. Um, you mentioned soul ties in the book, and I've been preaching to that, especially to my little young people, people that I mentor. Um, I try to be auntie, mama, cute to them. Like, look, y'all need to be watch. You need to watch what you're doing at this stage in your life. Ooh, when you connect with people, you get tied to them, and your attitude, mood, personality can change, and you don't know why you're acting crazy because you got all this residue from somebody else in your spiritual life, you know, your spiritual being. Um, and so you talk about that in the book, um, the one that's called December, a story about burning my bed. And um, then I do want to ask if you can't give away if you ever burn the bed, we'll get to that. Um, when you talk about soul ties and so let's talk about, were you ever able to eliminate many or all of the soul ties that you created you know, during that experience, those, ex no, <laughs> no, right. No, I'm still tied to, hold on. Let me think about December. I still, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, every last, every last one of, except for one, right. Except for one character in the book. I do not talk to as of now. And the only reason I don't talk to her is because Somebody killed her, broke my heart. Oh my goodness. Right, broke my heart. Right. Wow. So wasn't the one that just popped at your popped at your house and you tried to ride a few blocks and you tried to come up with all these scenarios like how can I get away without her seeing me? <laughs> oh that oh my goodness, that lady. I that that tie is I've been trying to break that tie since I got it. Right. I don't <laughs> No matter what I do, I can't get rid of that lady. I have tried, I have begged and pleaded and everything else in my life to get her out of my life. She still come back. Right? There is no blocking her. There is no changing your phone number. There is no none of that. You had to take I, that one to the altar. You said, you, said, you said earlier that there were some interesting there can be some interesting things that happen from playing on social media that is one of them okay that is one of those that is one of those instances where playing i would have never met that lady in life if i hadn't have entertained my social media <laughs> well okay we're gonna pray for her and you know, pray for this tie to be really it's because let me tell y'all, y'all gotta go listen to the story. I'm not gonna tell it to you, so <laughs> um that one was kind of hilarious in that moment, but yeah, y'all need to go check it out. I'm going to let me drop some of your first let's drop your website where people can find you. Um and then they can then hit all your social medias from that link. So uh, my my website is easy. It's freshoutent.card with two D's. Freshoutent.card. Two D's. Yeah, C A R D D. Okay. I think. Hold on, don't don't give me the line. Hold on. <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> Luckily, I'm sitting in front of my computer. <laughs> okay. So, we'll put that out. Um, 
and I can always edit it as needed if I got it wrong. Cause... <laughs> oh. Um, but y'all can find Mr. Hey Now or Day on Instagram. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's freshoutent.card with two R's. It's C A R R D dot co. Oh. C O. C A R R D dot C O. Okay. My website, my website starts out with Fresh Out ENT. Have my name day because depending on the day, I may go by something different. Okay. Right. Mr. Hate Now with Damon Smith. I am an ESA owner in the gene, and I speak openly about my depression, anxiety, PTSD, and multiple personalities. Because at this point in my life, I don't have nothing to hide. That's good. And again, look, y'all go check them out. And hopefully you are, again, inspired, empowered, encouraged to take control of your mental health, take control of your life. Um, don't set limitations for your life. I mean, listen to his stories and you can see what is capable for your life. I am a walking testimony as well. I mean, I'm still dealing with some things personally, but I mean, aren't we all? And so um, I'm still... In the space of ing, I had this conversation with a friend. I don't ever want to get to the ed, which is, you know, past tense or something. So, you know, um, and I'm speaking about what do you call the English term? Not English. Uh, lit uh, shoot, I've been out of school too long. <laughs> but y'all know what I'm trying to say. You know, when you add ing to the end of a word, it's like the present uh, tense. It's like you're. It's a constant in motion version of that word. So I want to continue to be living in the ING and not the ED because then it's like, that's the end of my dash on my tombstone and, and I'm not ready for that. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so I want to just say thank you to Infinity Beyond for you agreeing to do this interview. And I no know problem, there's so much... Man. This, whatever huh? you want to set up, whenever whenever they want part two, three, four, five, let me know. Oh right. yeah, we're definitely gonna do some more because there's we didn't touch on everything. Uh, I just want people to really get a feel of who you are. I want them to get introduced to your projects. But first, go to their website, freshoutent.card.co. There you can find links to all of his other projects. His store goes to port. Support black businesses, y'all. You know, y'all know what we do over here. Anywho, so before we get up out of here, though, I want to give you the opportunity to share any encouraging words, um, advice, just a message <laughs> to the people. Oh, I have, listen, I have the best message ever for the people. What I tell people all the time is this right here. Yesterday is gone and tomorrow will never come. All you have is today. Because when tomorrow get here, it's going to be today. Don't put too much thought into the things that's past tense. And never really trip off of what's too far away. Just enjoy, enjoy what you have because that's all you can enjoy. Most definitely. All righty. Well, thank you, Mr. Hey Now. I was hoping Miss Emma Jean made another little cameo. Y'all, I got to see her in the beginning, but she probably gone back into her little chill spot by now. Oh, I'm, listen, I'm telling you, my little mama is a bag. All you got to do is rattle a bag. She's going to come, <laughs> right? I don't know why she do that or nothing, but if you if you sound like you finna eat some, she pop up like a right. ghost. I don't know why. Y'all have to go check out Listen, his song. Here she go. Come. Come on. <laughs> did she come for real? Of course she did. Of, of course she did. If you open up, if you rattle a bag in the house, she's coming to see what it is. <laughs> hi, mama. Well, hello, hey. Miss Energy. Miss EJ. Say hi, mother. <laughs> Say hi, mother. Pretty right. baby. And she is an influencer all on her own. So y'all go check her out as well. Look, side story. 
right? Side story and transparent moment. I had my mother's funeral, November 18th, 2017. I gave her a eulogy while she was still alive. But within that eulogy, I told her that I would do everything in my power to make sure her name lived forever. Fast forward, it's 2021, and my mother has 1.9 million followers. So I'm doing my very best to keep my mother's name alive forever. That's awesome. <laughs> that is so awesome. Um, and is there any way people can show love to your baby girl, like send her gifts and things of that oh, nature? Yeah. They, listen, check the, check the Instagram, check the website, all of that. I own a business, so anything that somebody might want to send me, just send it to my business. I got I to gotta be there. Okay. <laughs> Well, alrighty, um, Mr. Hey now. Thank Mr. you, Q. <laughs> I appreciate you more than you know. No uh, and we will be doing this again. Yes, ma'am. Whenever you're ready, just let me know. All right. So, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in and for watching the Q Spot podcast video series. Don't forget to check me out Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all of that. And don't forget to hit like, follow, share. You know, y'all know what to do. Anywho, y'all don't forget to be intentional with your words, your thoughts, and your actions. And as always, y'all, pink sugar kisses. Hey, now. Thank you for watching the Q Spot podcast video series. Don't forget to join the Q crew so you don't miss a beat. Follow, like, and share on all of my social media platforms as well as the major podcast platforms. Lastly, be intentional with your words, your thoughts, and your actions.